Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do Make It Merry Crochet Tree. This could be Christmas oriented or it could be just something for your decor. In my case it'll be just decor. So what I've done ahead of time is that I've done all of the leaves for this particular one, all the different sizes. I'm gonna give you some advice. Now it is using Red Heart with Love as the choice. You can see that there's two different colors here in play. I decided to try something unique because I've done something like this in the past but with um, a different kind of concept but I'm using Red Heart Colorscape instead and the yarn changes slowly on its own. So the leaves have the potential to be different colors. So when I'm going to stack this onto this tree it'll actually look more artist, art, artistic. And so I need to give you some advice and we have all the different sizes. There's four different sizes and uh, it's really quite uh, not a hard pattern to be able to follow so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get you started on the center cover piece and this will be going over top of a cone. So this here is my styrofoam comb and it says that the cone is four inches in diameter and it is uh, um, sorry 12 inches high. So I just picked that up, 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 up at the craft store if you like. Um, so that's kind of a neat idea. So I want to um, just start this off. This is actually um, showing that there is a, a little thing that is glued to the bottom like a little um, styrofoam thing but I'm not gonna bother to do that. But So what I'm going to do today is get yourself started and we're gonna start off with our cone. Also gonna give you some advice when we get to the leaves and I'll cover that when we get there. So in the meantime let's get started on the cover, uh, on the centerpiece cover. Before we get started I wanna just share with you these leaves here are separate from the cover. So the cover is just done and then those leaves are just sewn individually on top of this. So it's gonna be very strategic on how you wanna do it. So if you want to maintain one color you can. If you wanna make it more colors you can do so as well. So let's really get started. Now you'll need uh, just a small crochet hook a size G6 or four millimeter hook. As we get started the centerpiece cover can be pretty much any color that you want but try to get it as close as possible it'll be pretty much invisible. Let's start off and we are going to create a chain four to begin. So with the five, oh sorry with the size G um, crochet hook of four millimeters. So one, two, three, four and now let's begin round number one. Fourth chain from the hook we want to put in 11 double crochets. So the chains that we just skipped over count as a double crochet. So there should be a total of 12 of these going all the way around. So please do that and uh, we're gonna continue our journey in just a moment. So get your 12 double crochets in all together. Once we get all the way back around just join with the slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Okay so that's the very beginning and so you should have a total of 12 which includes that chain. So let's uh, move on now to round number two. Now round number two and the remaining of the rounds we're gonna work in the back loops only so it leaves the strand available to you so when you go to sew those other leaves on there it will work out really quite fabulously. So let's chain one to begin round number two and then uh, in the back loops only single crochet in the same stitch. So we want a single crochet in the back loop only like that and single crochet in each of the back loops all the way around. So nice and simple. So this is gonna immediately start to condense it so that it will turn into a cone shape in no time at all. So one single crochet in the back loop all the way around for round number two. I'm coming up all the way around and then I'm going to just slip stitch to the regular top of a of a stitch right there. Let's move on to round number three. We're going to chain three so one, two, three and that counts as a double crochet here and throughout and working in the back loops we're going to apply one starting in the very next one, one double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. So let's do that. This is round number three. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just going to join to the top of the beginning chain three. That was round number three. So continuing to still working in the back loops and what we're going to do is that we are just going to do a repeat pattern. So we're gonna chain up one and in the same one of the join we want to apply a single crochet. So in the back loop only. Now the next stitch here is going to be two single crochets. So we're gonna start building out a little bit and then we are gonna continue then our journey. So here is the repeat pattern for the whole thing. So it's gonna be single crochet in the next one and then the next one after that has two. Okay, so the next one has one single and then the next one has two. Please do that all the way around for round number four. Coming up to the end of number four the last stitch has two 
single crochets in it and that's just because I'm keeping the count. So I'm not doing anything special with that. And then we're gonna move up to round number five. So round number five, we're gonna chain up three, one, two, three, there's your first double. And coming into the very next stitch, you want to apply one double crochet in each of the back loops all the way around and this will be round number five. So coming up all the way around, I just had double crochets in each, just joined to the top of the first chain three. Round number six, chain up one and in the back loop only do this one and do the next one. So single crochet only and then put two into the next one. So one and two. So the repeat pattern then for round number six is that there's gonna be one by itself two times and then the third one is going to have two into the same. So one, one, two, one, one, two. Please do this all the way around, round number six. Coming up all the way back around, the last one has two single crochets and that's just cause I'm keeping count. And then we're gonna move on to round number seven. Like before, chain up three and then in the back loop only, starting in the very next one. Sorry, uh, yeah, starting in the very next one, you're just gonna put one double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. This is round number seven. Coming up to the end of round number seven, just double crocheting right to the end and attach to the top of the chain three. Round number eight, we're going to pick up again. So we're gonna just chain up one and in the back loops only, just do the same one of the join and then do the next two by themselves. So there's a total of three single crochets by themselves and then the next one has two in it. So the repeat pattern for number eight is that there's three single crochets by itself and then the fourth one is two into the same one. Please do that all the way around. This is round number eight. Coming up all the way back around, the last one has two in the same one. That's just cause I'm keeping the count and then let's move up to round number nine, chain up three and then in the back loops only starting in the next one is one double crochet in each. So essentially you don't, you have every other round as a growth round and then the other one with these double crochets are just kind of following its lead. Let's continue then. This is round number nine. Coming up to the end of round number nine. So round number 10 is part of the repeat pattern. 10 and 11 will be repeating over and over once we get to, uh, beyond into rounds number 16 to 25 but for now we're gonna carry on. So round number 10 is chain up one and in the same one of the join you're going to single crochet and you're gonna do the one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. So there's no growth on round number 10. So please do this and I'll see you at the end of row number, round number 10. Once you come all the way back around just slip stitch to the beginning. That was row number round number 10. Chain up uh, three, so one, two, three and round number 11 is just one double crochet in each. Okay, so do that. So this is a round number 11. So 10 and 11 will be the repeat after we get beyond uh, a certain section but we're gonna keep on moving on into round number 11 next. So we're gonna keep moving on to round number 12 and 13 next and I will see you back here in just a moment. Okay, I'm finishing up round number 11. So 12 and 13 is exactly what we just did, 10 and 11. So just chain up one and in round number 10 we're going to um, just put one single crochet in the back loop only and then round number 11 once again chain up three and one double crochet in the back, uh, in the back loop. So that will cover you then for rounds number 12 and 13. Meet me back here after the 13th is complete. So finishing up round number 13, just, just a double crochet in each. So we're gonna expand one more time and then that's it for the expansions for this and what we're going to do is uh, chain up one and working in the back loops only. We're gonna single crochet in the same one as the join. Okay and single crochet in the next three. So one, two and three and then two single crochets in the next one, one and two. Okay, so the re remaining of this one here is just single crochet in the next three. So one, two, three and then add the fourth one. So it's actually single crochet in the next four and then two double crochets in the next. So just to verify one more time, single crochet in the next four. So one, two, three and four 
and then two into the next. Please do this all the way around. This is round number 14. Coming to the last one, the last one will be two singles into the same one, keeping in the count and then join it. And then round number 15, you already know what you're doing here and it's just chain three and in the back loops only, just starting that and go one double crochet in each all the way around. So I'm going to meet you at the end of the round and then I'm gonna kick you off to do the remaining of the repeats for this whole thing uh, because now it's just a matter of just repeating two rounds as you do the rest and I would check it off on your list too. See at the end of this round, this is round number 15. So I'm coming up to the end of round number 15 and I'm just going to join. So now for the remaining of this cone shape, you are going to now repeat rounds number 10 and 11 a total of five more times. So 16 and 70, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24, 25. So what I did on my sheet is that I just marked that. So let me show you that sheet and then you can do that and check it off too. So here on my sheet it says repeats rounds number 10 and 11 which takes you from 16 to 25. So I just put it in brackets. So this is 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11. So I would do that and just check it off as you go and let's continue then after that point and we're gonna continue to go. So we're gonna try to keep our rows nice and straight when we slide it onto the cone which will be the next step which I will get this done first. So I've now just come up to the end of row number 25 and I'm just going to slip stitch and then that's it. So the story is complete. So you can see it kind of like cones out and then it goes straight and we're gonna be slipping that over top of the other cover. I'm gonna show you the tips on how to finish this yarn. So just uh, snip it off and pull through there. Okay and then just grab a tapestry needle. You're gonna need one anyway for this whole project and just slide it on. This is a wool needle. Um, I found it at a local craft store. Uh, just an independent one and just sliding it through the back side. So once and when you pull on it don't change the shape of your cone. Two and three. So let's uh, just review on how we're going to slip this onto the cone. Um, I find the styrofoam is not easy to slide onto so what I would do if I were you is just take this and grab the tip of it and just pull onto it like a sock and just kind of put it inside out a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this tip and we're gonna push it down over the top. So let's just do that next. So just the tip of the cone and it's inside out. So you're just gonna push down and then just grab it and centerize stuff. So you're gonna wanna stretch it as you're moving its way down. It's easier to do the little pieces than it is to do everything. And just keep on sliding it all so the goal is, is to keep these lines pretty much straight as you're doing it. So you see it's up on an angle. So I pulled down too far on one side. So I just wanna kinda just shift things around and make sure that we try to keep those as even as possible. Oh there's my problem right there. Okay so let's move on and we're going to put it down. There you go. So the cone is complete and if you want to just tie a strand from one side to the other just to hold it straight down you can but once you add those leaves you'll have a bit of weight too. Let's start making leaves. So let's review on the leaves. So we have four different sizes that we want to do. These smaller sizes barely use any yarn at all. So if you're using self striping yarn like this, if you use the continuous of the same one, the whole thing pretty much will be the same color. So what I decided to do as I was making the larger leaves, I started making the smaller leaves. So when I got to a certain color, I would, when I finished one, I would just do a small one and then put it aside. When it comes to these bigger ones, you can keep on making them. You don't have to uh, just change around your yarn balls at all because they do slowly transition. So if you're doing it like the project it says make 28 of color A and 21 of color B that gives you the total number of 49. For the self striping I made 49 of the large ones just like so and I just kept using the yarn. So I, I just did a little bit of the smaller stuff so that I could get myself into these little colors without having much of a repeat. So you, we, we want 49 of this large leaf and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. It's actually really quite easy once you get started. So let's begin to do the large leaves. Still using the same size hook a four millimeter size G6. It's actually really easy. So what I'm recommending to you keep this yarn tail relatively short um, because you're gonna have to trim most of it out anyway. So keep it short so you don't waste this fabulous yarn and create a slip knot. Then we're going to chain 12. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So as we start this round, uh, row, this is round one. We're gonna come down to one side, turn the corner at the base, and then come back up the other side. So these are done in rows. So second chain from the hook, always remember that it's a single crochet first. And then the next one is a half double crochet. So go in the back hump of a chain. It'll be easier for you in the future. So, so it's a single and then a half double. Okay, so the first two are single and a half double. The remaining all the way down except for the very last stitch is just a double crochet. So staying on the back loops only, just do one double crochet in each. So it gives you the count on how many it is but I'm telling you just keep double crocheting and then the very last chain is the one that is different. So you can save yourself all that painful counting. So I got two more left you can see that and just do the next one and then the last one we need to turn the corner and go down the opposite side here. So in the very last one you're going to put in six double crochets into the same one and that will force it to turn around. So this is two, three, four, five, and six. And you'll find with this color transitioning yarn it will start transitioning too. So starting in the next one you're going to double crochet all the way back except for the very final two. So again don't worry about counting. So lay the straggler down on top of the line and just going into the very next one. So this is the underside of the chain and just double crochet the first two and then move that straggler. You're just going right up over top of the straggler. You see that? So what you can just do is move it to the back side. Get it out of your way. Just do two only and then continue to double crochet all the way to the other side except for the very final two. What are the final two going to be? Do you remember? I'll give you a moment. The final two, the second last one will be a half double crochet and the very last one will be a single crochet. So it's exactly how you started if you wanna recall it that way. So coming all the way over. So the very final two is going to be one half. So you're gonna get smaller and then the last one is a single crochet. And then you turn and that straggler that's poking up, poking up, why don't you get rid of that now? It's out of your way and then we'll move on to row number two next. So what I'm looking for as I'm, I've, I've already turned this so I'm doing row number two which is the last row. You're just gonna chain up one and you were going to apply um, a single crochet in the first one and then you're going to continue then in the next ones all the way to the point pretty much as a half double crochet. Now it says to do ten but here's the thing. You can avoid the counting if you just look and what you're looking for you remember the six that were in the end? Well the second one in is where you're going to start the fun stuff. Okay so you can either count or you can look. So you can see that this is the starting of the six. So it's the second one in is where you're going to start the fun stuff. So once you get to the second one you're going to half double crochet and look at it. These two are on one side of the center line. These two are on the other side of the center line. So just remember it that way. And you're going to apply two half double crochets into each of the next four. So these two that I just put in, okay the, the two in a row is one side of the the leaf and then the next two there will be two in those as well and that's the other side of the leaf and that makes it that turn point that you see within the project. Now you're just going to half double crochet yourself all the way back except for the very last stitch it'll be one single crochet. Now I found with myself once I did a few of these I got this into my head that I didn't have ex excessively count because you can see what you need to do. If, as long as you know to look for it. And once you get all the way back the last one is just a single crochet like that. And then that's it. You wanna leave a long enough tail because you're gonna use that to sew it to the cone and this then would conclude off 
the large leaves and you're gonna make a total of 49 of these. So 28 of one color, 21 of another. If you want more colors just make sure that there's only 49 and that's the large leaf. Let's move on to the next size leaf. So we're now going to move on to the medium size. So large and medium you can see it's a little bit of a difference and when I do these just I wanna just show you what I do with them. Um, I kept all the large 49 on its own but the other ones I grouped them together with a very loose tie here so that all of these were the medium size so that I could easily find them. So the medium size are slightly smaller and it's just easier to keep it all together as one. Let's move on and create a slip knot and begin row number one. Oh, sorry the chain for the medium leaves. So let's do medium leaves. You need a total of 14 of those. So seven of one color, seven of another. In my case it was just 14 and I am going to chain nine this time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So it's very similar to what we just did. There's just some slight variations. So second chain from the hook in the back loop just do a single crochet in that one and then half double crochet in the next. So it's like the, the big one and now you're gonna double crochet yourself all the way to the end. So the very last one we're gonna whip around and create the, the round semicircle. So you're just double crocheting yourself all the way down the chain. When I first do stuff like this I count it and then I look for the what, what is easier not to count. So the last one is going to be six double crochet. So let the project turn. So one, two, three, four, five and six and there's the straggler. So like we did before lay it down and under the next two you're just gonna apply one double crochet in the next two. Make sure it's underneath the stitch. You only have to do two pretty much and then just let it plop to the back side. You're going to continue to double crochet yourself all the way except for the very final two. It's gonna be done like the large leaves where the final two are slightly different. Okay, so the second last one is gonna be a half double crochet and then the last one is a single crochet and then that's it. You're done. Sorry, you're done this uh, round. So now we're going to move along and we're gonna turn our work and do row number two. So like we did before, the straggler is now popping out the back. See if you, if you keep it too long then you're gonna waste your yarn. So keep it short. So like before we're looking for the, the round circle here at the end. So this case we're going to turn up uh, chain one and we're gonna single crochet in the next eight it says. But what I'm going to recommend to you is that you look for the middle four of that grouping of six at the end. Just eye it up. It's, it's actually not hard to do. Okay, so here's the grouping of six. It's the second one that is where I wanna start. And what I wanna do in the second one plus the other three, so the so you got the two on the one side of the center line, two on the other, it's two single crochets in each. So one, two, that's one side of the center line, one and two and then finally this is the fourth one. So one and two and then just carry on and keep on single crocheting right to the end and that, that will conclude off the medium size that you'll have to do. And you wanna leave a long enough strand so that you can use that to sew it to the project at the end. Okay, so let's do that. So just leave your strand and that will conclude off doing the medium leaves. And just pull through the loop and put it aside. That's medium. So let's move on to the small leaves. So these are not the smallest but they're the small ones. So it's the next size down from medium. So it just says make seven of one color which is A. So they're telling you to do that and let's continue to do that. So we're gonna chain only six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And second chain from the hook you are going to single crochet and then you are going to then half double crochet in the next one. Okay and keep half double crocheting all the way to the end. So 
So the very last stitch here is gonna have six half double crochets that circle around. So you see it's much smaller. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then laying the straggler down just do the half double crochets over top of the straggler as well to lock it in and just do two of them and then just push it to the back. So as you get all the way across the very last one here which is coming up next is just a single crochet and that's it. Then we turn our work and do the next row. Like before we're looking for the actual um, pieces at the end in order to keep it going. So we're gonna just chain up one and we're gonna single crochet. So we're looking for the four at the end which starts on the second one of the grouping of six. And I got into the point where I can just eye it up. So the next two are on one side of the center point. The next two are on the other. So putting in two single crochets in each of the four. And then you're just gonna single crochet yourself then all the way back to the end of the row. Like that. So you wanna get rid of your stragglers and then you leave it off uh, of a tail so that you can have something to sew on to. So this would conclude then the small leaves and we're gonna move on to the smallest leaf next. So let's move on to the smallest leaves. So you're just gonna start off with a slip knot and you're going to chain a total of only six. So one, two, three, four, five, six and single crochet second chain from the hook. So you're just gonna single crochet second chain from the hook and half double crochet in each of the stitches all the way to the end of the row. And in the last one we wanna put five only half double crochets to do the circle. So let's count those out. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're just gonna start with the half double crocheting coming back to go right up over top of that straggler for at least two and then push it to the back and then half double crochet the remaining except for the very last one you wanna do a single crochet. And then that's it, done. So those are the smallest leaves. You'll leave an extra long tail. You'll get rid of your straggler and that will conclude off doing then the smallest leaves and you need a total of seven of those in order to get those to work. So let's move along in the pattern to something new. So now we're gonna start off with the star. I'm not gonna put it on my project but I'll show you how to do it. And what we're going to do then is that you'll have to do two of these and you'll just butt them up against each other and sew them together so they have the thickness. So you're just gonna chain two, so one, two. And then in the very first chain you're gonna put five single crochets in there. So we have one, two, three, four, and five and then um, we're just gonna do that. So we're gonna work in a continuous round it says. It says not to do a slip stitch. So we're gonna do two single crochets starting in the first one in each. So we're gonna, um, what I would do if I were you though, I would put in a stitch marker because you may not remember where that is. So just grab a spare piece of yarn so you know where the last stitch is before you begin this, this round. So starting in the very next one over here. So if you're not sure just count it back and you can count that. And we're going in both of the loops. So no back looping. And you're gonna apply two single crochets in each. So one, two. So I would count there's one there. So there's two in there. So I would count that as one. And then I would count this as two and two. So two in there. And the next one is three and three. Next one is four and four. And finally the last one where the stitch marker is, you can see it, is going to be five and five. Okay. 
Okay, so um, what we're going to do is that we're gonna move on to the final round number three. To begin the next one we're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch. So round number three, so slip first and then chain a total of four. So one, two, three, four. Second chain from the hook you want to single crochet. So just on the chain itself, so single and then the next one will be a half double and then the final one will be a double crochet and that will give you a point. So then it says half double crochet in the next chain. Sorry, uh, half double crochet, da, da, da. Um, skip a stitch on the thing and then start in the next one. So we're gonna skip one stitch and slip into the other. Sorry, I'm just figuring this out as I'm going. And then you're going to then chain four. So one, two, three, four. Second chain from the hook, you're gonna single crochet. And then you're gonna do a half and then a double. So skipping the next stitch and slip stitch into the next and begin again. So chaining four and then do singles, uh, half, double, skip a stitch and then slip. So you're gonna do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. When you get back around you're just gonna slip stitch to where you had started and then that's it. So you'll do two of these and you'll sew them together and then when you go to position these on the top just leave the bottom slightly open and then you can just pop it down so that it's just sliding up like a pole kind of concept and that's kind of a neat idea. So this would be how you would complete the star. So now once you have everything done we're going to then start the assembly process onto the tree. So let's do that next. The cone here is in rings. So these tight rings are where we're going to be sewing the leaves to. So if you look at the tight one at the top, so this is a two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, and then twenty-two. So this ring here is where we're gonna start. Okay, so you can see that there's one more ring but we're gonna start here because the leaves are gonna fall down. So what we need to do is that in the instructions it has you how many leaves that you're gonna do and the tight and the size. So it's saying for you to be able to uh, position that. So let's uh, just take a look at those instructions next. So here in the instructions it says as we start for round number 22 uh, arrange a uh, straight edge of the leaves Okay, and there's gonna be seven of those. So seven A large. So A is the color. So you're gonna do that. So if you want to have your color strategized just the way it, it's telling you to do. In my case I'm gonna randomize my colors. Then you're going to sew those together which I'll show you how to do. Now because I'm missing the star at the top when we go to do these small ones and there's gonna be seven of those small ones that go around the top I'm going to do a little circle and I'm gonna sew the circle right directly to the top of the cone. So I would probably just do like a um, chain two um, single crochet second chain from the hook and then do two single crochets in each and then use that circle if it's big enough to sew it down. You could even go a little bit bigger if you wanted to as well. So let's uh, continue this and let me show you how I'm gonna strategize this. So I have my total of 49 but I have many different colors that you can see and what I wanna do is I wanna pick the first seven of them. So you can just like put it in a semi like in a circle like here. You know just kind of be fun with it and you wanna do a total of seven. So two, four, six. Okay and then seven. So there's my seven. So what I'm gonna do if I'm happy with that what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take up some pins and I'm gonna strategize this onto that first ring. So start at the bottom because it's easier to get onto and take a pin and just pin it into position. And what I can do at this moment is that if once I pin it in I'll be able to see where I need to go next. And the pin is just gonna slightly hold it and it will then pop out later. Then just take the next one and see how it's gonna go. And go about halfway round and you'll see exactly what you're thinking for spacing. Remember these leaves do fall over top of each other so they will not necessarily in all rings 
cover all of the space, right? You can leave gapping because the next leaf will then fall down and when you position the next leaf you wanna go in the middle here so that it will fall like that. So continue to do that all the way around. So once the first layer is pinned then you just can take a look and see if it's pretty much equal. And so when you have then the next layer that will go over top where those gaps are, you'll want to attach in areas where they'll fall over those spaces and you'll be building it up that way. So once you have that done, you're just gonna take your strands that you had left over and you are going to then sew those into position. So putting this into your needle, you're just going to just go across and then just capture that back piece on there. This shouldn't take too much time I hope. And then just going back in. So just kind of grab it on two areas here. Like that. Okay and then once you're satisfied with that you don't have to be too um, too stringent with it. And then what you wanna do is just go across the top like that. So once and then go back across the other way. It's kinda hard for this angle but it's for your teaching benefit. So I'm gonna put this on my lap later. And then I'm just gonna go back a third time. So if you go back and forth three times it should never fall off this. And then you can safely then trim that right to the leaf itself. It should never fall out on you. And then remove in your pin. And then kind of use that as your kind of like starting point and continue to sew them all together. So just follow the instructions of being able to put all your leaves and using each one of those rings. And when I come back I'll have this completely done. So what I'm doing now is that I just did a circle. So listen to my instructions. I chain two and I put six single crochet in the beginning chain to create the ring. I slip stitched, I chained one and I put two single crochet in each one of the six. I then slip stitched and then I chained one and then I put one single crochet in the first, two into the next, one into the next, two into the next. So one and two, one and two. So I'm now sewing that. So I just finished that off. So I left on the strand and what I'm doing is that I'm sewing it to the edge right here. Do you see that? So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of stuffing in behind to make that pop up. I don't know how much stuffing I really need but I'm just doing it so that I can do that so that when I pull this down the top will have a point. So all I'm doing is that I'm whip stitching very much how I put the petals on and I'm just going up over top of the fluffing so the top will peek out. So I'm just capturing the edges only and therefore I kind of have a top there instead of a star but if you wanna put your star you can. Just remember you had to back up your star so when you did the star we had this and you would have another one so you'll kind of slide it over but I kind of like it like this better because this is right for regular home decor for me and not necessarily Christmas. So this is what it looks like and I'm really quite proud of it. It didn't take too long to sew. It was actually a lot easier than I expected and that's it for today. So have a good day and we hope to talk to you again real soon. Bye bye now.